So my name is Alexandra Grant. I am currently in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I work production for music festivals um, as an independent contractor. And I was a student here at Loyola um, and also an adjunct professor teaching festival productions. It was great. We had these energetic kids who come into this class loving festivals. You know, these are the kids that are rushing the gates and, you know, sitting front row. So they're like, oh, I totally want to work festivals. And then, uh, you know, the first thing we talk about is, so let's talk about fencing. And it's an eye opener to them that, that festivals is a business. You know, it, of course it's fun. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a business. And there are nitty gritty things like fencing and portalettes that you may need to talk about and, you know, fire watches and permits and that's like, whoa, okay, uh, all right, let me think about this. But halfway through the course, they were all very interested in knowing that it takes a village to make a festival happen. It's not just one person, you know, making the wheel turn. And I think they enjoyed knowing that they can be part of this team that can make that happen. Um, and I think, I think with this class, they were able to decide whether they wanted to be on the artist side of festivals or maybe some of them were thinking about going to law school so they can be the lawyer representing the festival and doing all the contract work. Um, and I think a few of them, you know, were interested in the production side of things, but I don't think they understood how much was actually involved. So it's kind of an eye opener and it's nice because I think you just find your way in this class. You find what path works best for you if you are interested in event production because it's not just specific to to festivals I mean events are events and yes we concentrated most on festivals but you can always veer to smaller festival you know or smaller events or you know private events or something like that if you're interested um, but they seem to really enjoy it and we taught it for three semesters and we got to take um, a bunch of the students to different festivals in New Orleans um, so they can kind of see you know the ins and outs and do a walkthrough before the festival actually starts and you just see all these people running around with their heads cut off you know like going crazy trying to get everything ready for gates um, and probably about 75 percent of the students also interned or volunteered at three or four different festivals in New Orleans and a few of them even contacted us to try to get connected to festivals outside of New Orleans. They may have been going home for the summer, you know, to where they, to where they live. Um, and they were able to successfully intern at these places and some of them are still working there. And that's mind blowing because I'm like, wow, maybe I should be working there, you know, and here these students are, uh, you know, just killing it. They're doing great. So. That was fun. It was, it was fun to get them involved and it was fun to see that I think I was that person, you know, however many years ago. It was refreshing. Um, let's see, it was my first year in New Orleans and Jazz Fest was looking for people to sell t-shirts and I applied and I got accepted and I went and pretty much hawked t-shirts at the t-shirt booth. And that was, I guess, 10 years ago. And since then, I don't know, you just kind of meet people along the way and introduce myself. And now I no longer sell t-shirts and I no longer work at Jazz Fest, but I work, you know, about 10 other festivals throughout the year. Um, each of them are different. Um, most of them are site and production based. So we would advance all of the site needs, you know, such as um, portalettes and fencing and tents and barricade and all of those elements that are behind the scenes that no one really thinks about. And then on the production side, we would advance the staging, lighting, sound, video, um, and all of those components come together. And there's other departments such as AR, they would handle all of the artist relations and then you would have the operations team that would hire or would handle um, maybe security, credentials, things of that, that sort. But normally I'm on the, the building blocks basically side of the festivals. We advance far out and lay the site out to make it be smooth for people to walk through and navigate and then that's normally what my role is 
At two of them though, I do sponsorship site management, which is once the sponsor has signed the deal that they are going to give X amount of dollars to the festival, they then come in my hands and I tell them, okay, so let's talk about what you wanna do while you're on site. You say you want, for example, a 40 by 40 space, and we'll give you that 40 by 40 space, and these are the elements that you can put in it. So they'll come up with the design, we'll talk about if that's safe, if it's going to work with the whole look of our festival, and then we would um, advance all of their needs if they need heavy equipment to build their, to build their, um, their activation or if they need tenting or water or power, anything like that. So for two festivals, I kind of handhold sponsors and give them the site background of what they need to actually make their activation come to life. I think when I first came into the program, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew that I always wanted to work in some sort of event production. Um, what, and I thought it was gonna be more um, like a vent from a venue perspective, uh, not festivals. That, that wasn't my main, that, that not, wasn't my main goal when I first started. But then when you come to New Orleans and there are festivals such as Jazz Fest, Voodoo Fest, Essence Fest, Gretna Fest, like I mean you could just keep going on and on and on. You're like, oh wow, there's, there's a business in this. So once I started working one at Jazz Fest, you realize, okay, well maybe I can make a living out of doing this. And I think the program taught me that all I needed to do was speak up. You know, all I needed to do was introduce myself every time. And if I showed up for work and I did well, that this entire business is based off of who you know and how well you do your job and how well you communicate with those people. I mean, I haven't sent a resume out in years because my last job is my resume. And I don't think you get that experience working or going to another university that doesn't have you know, a, a music business program. I think business programs are great if you're going into entrepreneurship or you, know, you want to do whatever you want to do. But I think the music part of this is that there are so many professors here that are connected to the music world and not just in New Orleans. You know, they kind of have their hands in these pockets all around the U.S. that they are able to introduce you to new people and then it's up to you to take that further or not. And I learned, I don't think I would have learned that at another university that, hey, this is on me. Like, you know, I have, I have the resources right here and I need to use them. Um, and I think it, you know, it pushed me to, to speak up and, you know, and ask for a job, you know. And now, here we are still doing what I'm doing and what I wanted to do. I enjoy what I do. I would like to maybe do it at a higher, maybe management level in the next five years. I'd like to maybe work less festivals because when you do 10 a year, it's pretty taxing. Um, and I take on some other events too that are not music festivals and the traveling is, is a bit exhausting. So I would love to figure out somehow to still enjoy what I'm doing and still have the energy to do what I want to do um, and not get too burnt out. I don't ever want to hate this business. So I want to continue loving it in five years. So if somehow I make it work in the next five years where I'm still in love with what I'm doing and, and healthy and I feel good about it, um, then I guess we'll see where, where it takes me. But in this business, it's really strange. You think you're on this path, but really there's like seven different branches and you kind of go down all these different roads and you have no idea where it's gonna lead you. So I'm kind of open to it all. You know, if it takes me somewhere outside of festivals, that's cool too. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Oh, New Orleans is easy. It's, um, it's casual, it's warm. I don't like the cold anymore. Pennsylvania was way too frigid. Um, I can see music any night of the week, or I don't have to. I get to experience this culture that I don't think is in any other city. And I travel a lot 
and I have traveled a lot around the world as well and and I love traveling but there's something about coming home to New Orleans that feels right that feels um, feels at peace and it's and it's just easy you know and there is so much to do here and there's so much good food I mean God, I could eat all day um, but it's great I love this city I think I think New Orleans will forever be my home base um, because I think I will continue to travel for work you know as long as I can sustain that but um, New Orleans is a is a great city to welcome you home with open arms that's how I felt the first day I pulled on to St. Charles I mean I came here to New Orleans without like came to Loyola without ever even being in New Orleans I just applied came down sight unseen and I haven't left in 10 years. So I think that's, I think there's something to say for that, that you can step foot in a city for one day and be like, yep, this feels good. Well, I think, um, I think you should weigh your options. Um, I think you should pick a school based on the program as well as its location and also based on the faculty that's there that can offer you experiences that you may not have elsewhere. I know sometimes the, you know, the, oh God, how am I going to be able to afford this is exhausting and taxing on someone that young because that's really hard to think that you may be paying for school for however many years after you graduate. But don't think about that. Just go where, go where you think it makes sense and go where you feel welcomed and comfortable in the city and if you have your eyes especially on the music business I mean what other place has such a rich culture in music than New Orleans there are wonderful other cities large cities that embrace music as well but I don't think there's any other city like New Orleans that appreciate and respect their musicians um, and the whole music scene like we do here. And I think there's something I think there's something to say for that. And also this is a small city. People think that it's a huge metropolis and it's not. You know everybody. And I think in the music business especially that's important. So if you're kind of leaning towards I want to be in the music business, I'm not really sure where to go to school, you will be, you know, a big fish in a small pond here. And as long as you speak up and introduce yourself and talk you'll be okay but you know you have to just you have to go where where it feels right but new orleans always feels right <laughs>